Good evening. Welcome. I'm glad you guys are here this evening. I'm just going to go ahead and, and jump right into it. Uh, Hebrews 11.6 says, And without faith it is impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. See, this year what we've been talking about is that the righteous shall live by faith. And what we have been studying, what, we've been, what we have been learning under the word, what we've been focusing on this year is the power of a life lived in faith. And, and what we see in the scripture, what we see in the word, here especially, is that we have to see that it is impossible to please God without faith. 2 Corinthians 5.9 continues to reveal what our hearts should be towards God. 2 Corinthians 5.9 says, So we make it our goal to please Him, whether we are at home in the body or away from it. See, in order for us to please God, the only way that we can please God is for us to have faith. And so we just finished our series with the faith heroes. And what it said about each and every single one of them was that it was by their faith they found favor with God. And so then if we want to live life, one, we know we have to do it by faith, but it's the only way that we can live life pleasing to God. So we have to see faith too for us is the way that we're going to please the Lord. And so this new series I'm, I'm really excited to kick off tonight is our Faith 2 series. And what I love about this, Jill put this, put this together, and what, what I love about, I told Jill tonight, I said, I want you to leave the, the two, the, after the two, blank. Because we're going to be spending time over the next few weeks filling these blanks with different topics that I have, but tonight... I want you to, to, to take a look at faith with me and think about the endless possibilities that God has for each and every single one of us. All of us are needing to get our priorities straightened like this graphic right here. Where God, and that for those of you who don't know, that's the big alligator sign. Okay, God is greater than, or our faith is greater than, the mountains. God is greater than the struggle. God is greater than the problem. God is greater than, bigger than, more than enough than for whatever it is that we could even possibly put in that blank. And it doesn't diminish the size of the mountain. It doesn't, it doesn't change what we're having to go into except the fact that the outcome for us can be different. And that's what the Faith 2 series is going to be about. But tonight, I want us to see that we're to have faith in order for us to be pleasing to God and to overcome what is seen with what is not seen. And, and we have to see that this was designed by God to start. Hebrews 11.3. I think this is just really cool. Hebrews 11.3 says, By faith we understand that the universe was formed at God's command so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. See, it was God who is the author of our faith. He was the first one to operate in faith. When he spoke everything into existence out of nothing, he spoke in faith that what he said would produce. See, God's not asking us to operate in something that he, him first, that he first wasn't the one to start off. See, he did this. God operates in faith. God, God, God designed faith and how it was going to work. So whenever God is asking us to go into a system of faith in order for us to please him, all God's saying is, follow in my footsteps. Follow in what I did from the beginning. By faith, whenever God spoke, everything formed so that what was not seen was created. And see, we, we have to see that that's exactly how we're to operate. See, it's an application of what we hear. It's the application of what we hear. Leads to our faith becoming something that we can fill in the blank. And, and when we, we know what, what Romans says. Faith comes only by hearing and hearing by the word of God. 
But, but, but why, why, why is it only by hearing of the word of God? It's, it's because it's, that's how it's always been. It was God's words that he spoke. And, and we see this, we see the power of God's word and why it's God's word that kickstarts our faith in John 1.1. 1, 1, where it says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. See, we, we, we complicate this. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So that when we're we're talking about our faith being grown, the reason why it's grown only by hearing and hearing of the Word of God is because in the beginning it was the Word. Yesterday it was the Word, and today it is the Word. The the Word is still God today. That's why it's active and alive. That's why whenever we read the Word of God, it can make change and still be applicable today, because while it was it was God yesterday, it was God then, it's God today. It'll be God tomorrow. The Word of God will be God next week. The Word of God will be God five years from now. And our faith will always be affected by only hearing the Word of God. Y- y'all following me? I think y'all are there. I think y'all are there. We want to live in such a way that's pleasing to God. So we've got to have faith. Okay, then if we're going to want to have faith, we've got to continue to sit under the Word of God. We've got to continue to allow the Word of God to produce in us. Not just enough to hear the Word of God, but to have faith enough in that Word to then act on it and apply it. It's no different than if someone gives you instruction and you go, okay, that's great, and never apply what you learned or apply the instruction... That instruction will never have power, even though it's true and could work. We we have to apply what we're learning in order to have faith to conquer. See, I I love this graphic again. I just, Jill, you're just getting all the flowers tonight. I love this graphic again because as I just was meditating on this, and I just was thinking about these points as I just was leading into what I was wanting to talk about, God is greater than, than the mountains, but there's so many Christians who spend their lives having to go through mountains all the time. And it's to the place where they're not, they're not, they're not taking mountains captive and saying, be gone from me, be tossed into the sea. We're just making do camping in the mountains. We, we live in the mountains. I live, and I, I get it, we're all we're Missouri, Oklahoma, we're some hillbillies in here, that's okay. But, but these mountains are not, are not good things. And we, instead of, instead of applying faith to, to remove mountains out of our life, we spend our time trying to find a way to get around this mountain, or to go over this mountain, or can we dig under the mountain, or can we, whenever in reality what God's saying is, say to this mountain, be removed from me. We're we're spending too much time in the mountains. And God's got something beyond that he's trying to get us to, but we've got to apply what we've heard. See, unless there's a recognition that faith has been deposited we can never start saying, here's my, here's my mustard seed, God. We, the point is not to stay with a mustard seed size of faith forever. Mustard seed size of faith isn't going to kill that mountain or throw that mountain out of your way. We've got to grow our faith. And so in those two things, we see that faith is both given by God and it's grown. And we'll get into that later here in just a little bit. But I just want to say this. Your faith should be greater than the mountains. Or is it? Your faith should be greater than the mountains. Or is it? We have to take a hard look and decide whether or not we're going to believe what Mark 11, verse 22 says. And as God himself gives us clear direction for how we're supposed to apply faith. It says, start here, it says, Have faith in God, Jesus answered. 
Truly I tell you, if anyone says to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea and does not doubt in their heart but believes what they say will happen, it will be done for them. See, God is providing for us the formula for how we're to live our lives applying faith. The first thing is that we're to believe in God. That's the first step. And that's what we read there at the beginning. Unless we believe that God rewards those that earnestly seek him, see, we've got to believe God. We have to have faith in God. The second part is we have to let our faith be shown in action. It's got to produce something. It's not a belief. It's not just what we believe. It's what we have faith for. See, we, we all can believe that these chairs will hold us, but we have faith in them whenever we go, okay, I'm going to go ahead and I'm, I'm sending her on down. We're going to see. That's, that's faith in action. In the, our faith has to move us to action. And the third thing here is we're not climbing mountains. We're not living in mountains. We're, we're, we're sending them out of our way. See, the word is a lamp unto our feet. Unless we decide that we just like stumbling around in the dark instead. God gives us the power to turn on the lights. God gives us the light inside of us. Where we can constantly be walking around fully lit and not dim. Amen. We don't have to be dim, people. Amen. See, this Faith 2 series is going to address the areas of our life that we need to apply the word. But beyond just the topics that we can cover, I pray we begin to see that unless we apply the word, we'll, we'll never operate in faith. And, and that's and there's a lot of people that try to serve God that way. There's a lot of people that try to serve God in faith without the word. And all the time people miss the mark uh, because they're not rooted in the word. I, I love this last week we had VBS, and I, and I promise we're, we're, we're getting ready to get into everything here. But I, I couldn't not share this verse as I was down there working. This was our verse we were teaching our children. It was 1 Corinthians 16, 13. It says, be on your guard, stand firm in the faith, be courageous, be strong. Some of the, the kids that were working are back there mouthing mad a little on. They already knew what it was. See, we're, we're to stand firm in our faith. Our faith is supposed to be something that we can lock into, that we can hold fast to. It, it's to produce action. It's to produce a response. That's what real faith is. It, it's not just something that, well, I'm, I, I believe that. Well, I feel that. Well, I think that. No, I have faith for this, so I'm going to stand firm in this. And that's going to produce for us beyond just, well, I feel like that that's how that should happen, or I think that that's. See, we're going to be living the life that God wants, pleasing God, and seeing that our faith speaks louder in our actions, not just our words. Your, your, your faith speaks so much more in volume Less in what you say and more in how we act and react. Now, we understand that our salvation is not deeds-based, but our faith is. Our faith is deeds-based. What got us saved was not produced by our deeds, but our faith is. Our faith is shown by how we act and by what we do. That's faith. And, And so I'm just really, really excited tonight as we go into this. So... If we're going to live by faith, if we're going to have faith too, you fill in the blank. We have to make sure that we're we're really uh, firm in how we see faith. Because how we see faith is how we'll apply faith. So tonight, my four points is how you need to see faith. So that you know how to apply faith. Y'all with me? So how to see faith tonight. Four things. The first thing that you have to see faith is is that faith is tangible faith is tangible now hear me it's not it's not tangible in how you feel it's not tangible in 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 an, in a sense as far as like what you can in your five senses but faith is tangible in how you respond to certain things see I I love this verse in Ephesians 1, verse 13. It says, When you believed, you were marked in him with a seal, 
the promised Holy Spirit who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession. See, faith can be felt in our understanding of how the Lord has sealed us in the Holy Spirit. See, the Spirit that God has given us to, to kickstart our faith is not a spirit of fear and timidity, but of power, of love, and soundness of mind. Can we all just agree, you can feel timid, and you know what it's like to be timid, and to not have soundness of mind, and to not operate in power or in love, but we know, we know we're operating in faith whenever we start operating in that power. We know we're operating in faith whenever we're moving in love. We know soundness of mind as we're operating in wisdom. Faith is tangible. Faith is tangible. Hebrews 11.1 1 says, Now faith is the confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. You can, faith is tangible. Faith is tangible. Faith is tangible. I, I, I can't tell you. I, I don't know why. On the inside of me, I, I can't see it right now. But I just have this assuredness on the inside of me. I have this assuredness on the inside of me. See, whenever God begins to first start moving in us through faith, it starts first in the unseen. So whenever you're trying to believe, whenever you're trying to, to say to this mountain, be removed from my life, be, be cast out, be moving into something, it, it starts in here, in, a, in the secret place first. It starts, it, it starts on the inside of you. There's just something about an assuredness. And that assuredness is going to cause me to react this way or to not react this other way. Faith is tangible. Faith is tangible. You can feel when you're operating in faith. And I'm going to use the word feel. I think we all get what I'm saying. You can feel when you're operating in faith and you can feel when you're not. It's tangible. The people around you can see when you're operating in faith and when you're not. The people that are depending on you to operate in faith, can witness you operating in faith and when you're not. Your children can, can witness. It's tangible. There's something in the house. There's something that we're allowing to come into our life when we're operating in faith. Y'all, are y'all with me? So faith is, faith is tangible. It's the first one. The second thing we need to see that faith is, is that faith has multiple purposes. Faith has multiple purposes, or faith is a multi-purpose tool, however you want to. See, faith is a lot like men's shampoo. <laughs> See, I'm sorry, ladies, y'all have to miss out. Y'all need seven bottles to do what ours does. See, we've got shampoo, conditioner, and body wash, all in one nice little package. And I believe that we're not too far off, men from the technology where we can unite under one banner deodorant and toothpaste in that same, in that same thing, and we'll be all the way there. We'll have, we can literally take care of everything in one bottle. Maybe faith isn't a whole lot like men's shampoo because it can do more things. But we have to start seeing that our faith has multiple purposes beyond just salvation. Now, I say just salvation. I say just salvation. Salvation's a huge, a huge thing, monumental. But did you know that God said that there's more for you beyond? See, your faith can be applied. God wants you saved. Could you believe that God might want you healed? Well, will God save me? Do you have faith that God wants your thoughts to be right about yourself? Could you believe for a moment that God wanted you saved and he wanted you to be able to operate correctly around everyone else? Do you believe that, that there's faith for you to change your actions? You think God would save you so that you could still be in bondage? Do you think God could save you so that you would still have strongholds in your life? Do you think God would give you faith enough that your own soul would be saved from hell, but yet you shouldn't walk in any power or authority here on this earth. Your faith has multiple purposes. 
your faith can do more for you. Your faith can fulfill every call and plan of what God wants to do in your life through it. But you're just using it to clean your hair. You're just using it for a very, for a very basic principle. And thank God you've got that one. But see, your faith can be bigger than that. Your, your faith can speak life-giving power in another person's life if you would choose to be so bold. Well, I, I just don't, I mean, I don't want to get in anybody's business. I don't want to. It, it, do you not think that when God said you're a city on the hill, don't cover up your lamp with a bushel? Oh, I don't know about your faith can produce more. Your faith can do more. Your faith is multi-purposed, multifaceted. See, we're not using our faith to its maximum capacity because we don't see faith, so we don't know how to use our faith. I didn't know that you could have faith to have a good marriage. I didn't know you could have faith to be, be settled and not have to have anxiety. I didn't know that you could have faith to not deal with the things. This is what my father did, my grandfather did, my great-grandfather did, so now I'm worried. I didn't know that you could have faith to rebuke things. I didn't know you could have faith to loose things. I didn't know you could have faith to bind things. Your faith can do more than just save you from hell. That's a big thing. That's a big thing, and I don't ever want us to put down becoming saved, but beyond that, Jesus said, I'm going to leave you because it's better for you if I go. It's because the Holy Spirit is going to come to equip us through our faith in who Jesus Christ said that he was. This Faith 2 series is going to be awesome, but we've got to see that faith goes beyond any one area. Okay, y'all with me? Multi-purpose. Third thing I want you to see about faith so you can know how to have faith to do something is that your faith is limitless in everything but one thing. And that's our end. Your faith is limitless except for our end. Now here's what I mean by that. God's not limited. God's not limited. We're the ones that bring limitations on God. Y'all following what I'm saying? Now, now we can live without limits, but where the limitations come is never on God's end. When it comes to faith, it's on our end. Okay? I'll make sure I'm not confusing anyone. See, I said this earlier, faith is given, and then it's grown. See, there's, there's been a deposit made on the inside of you whether or not you decide to invest that in faith or bury it in the dirt is on you. God's put a deposit on each and every single one of us. It's on us whether or not we decide to bury it or invest it in faith. Y'all following me? Y'all with me? We all start at different seasons, and that's why 1 Peter 2, 2 says, like newborn babies... Crave spiritual milk so that by it you may grow up in your salvation. We all start somewhere with this measure of faith, and when we decide to invest it, it's not, it's not for us to judge or condemn one another, but rather for us to see God expects you to start somewhere, but you decide whether or not if you're going to grow your faith. We decide. We get to decide whether or not we're going to apply the word. We decide if we're going to apply our faith. We decide what we're going to do with the small measure. See, God's not a respecter of persons. But let me tell you, if you sit on your faith and bury it, and I decide to invest it, it's not because, oh, well, Chapman just must read his Bible so much more than me, or it must just be that Chapman's just something special. That's why God shows his favor on some and not on others. No, 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 no. It's what I've decided to do with my faith. It's what the people around you that you look to, you're like, man, what great faith they have. Boy, it sure be nice to have gotten some of that. No, they've, they've just grown theirs. 
They've just grown theirs. And, and, it's, and that's what I'm saying. The, the, the limiting end of faith is never on God. It's on us. It's what we decide to do. That's why there's so much in the Bible that talks about we're, we're not to condemn one another when we, when we see ourselves falling short, but rather we're to hold each other accountable to what's been placed on the inside of us. Not to condemn, but to bring us into, back into a place where we can live a life of faith, where we can live a life that is pleasing to God by walking in faith. That's what we've been called to do. See, we, we just went through a whole series. And I don't know if y'all can remember that far, because it's been a little bit farther for me to sleep, but I don't remember Moses and Noah's stories being anything alike. I don't remember Esther's story being the same as Elijah's story. I don't remember Jacob's story being like Isaiah. I don't remember anybody's story being the same other than the fact that they all got hold of a principle of faith and they decided to. See, we all have different stories. We all have different backgrounds. But what I'm telling you is, is that if we'll choose to apply God's faith, we can go to a place where we, where we this, this scripture that we all know and, and love and misuse all the time. But Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. All things? Like jump 52 inches so that I can dunk a basketball, so that I can hit home runs, so that I can be good at trivial things? No, we can conquer the mountains, we can remove things, we can end curses, we can pull down strongholds, and we can be strengthened in our faith. That's what that scripture is talking about. That's why we hold ourselves accountable. That's why we go to one another. That's why we use the word to hold ourselves accountable. There's no more condemnation for us that are in Christ, but we decide whether or not we're going to take what God's given us and apply it or bury it. And I really would love to operate in some heavenly stuff right now. There's a promised land experience for each and every single one of us that we can walk into if we decide, ah, the giant's ahead of us, we, we can take them, we got God. Or we can just keep wandering around the desert. What do we want to do? And the last thing I want you to see about faith so you know how to have faith to apply it. The fourth thing is that faith, and this is a toughie, faith is a mirror. Faith is a mirror. And here's what I mean by this. You cannot have a strong faith and a weak relationship with God. You cannot have a strong faith and a weak relationship with God. Boy, you want to talk about that one, hit me. As I just was meditating on this. Oh, the man upstairs. The big man. Who are you pointing at? You don't even know who you're pointing at. You don't even know who you're addressing. Well, if the big guy had a... Hold on, that's your Lord. He's not just the big man. He's not just the boss guy. He's the creator of the universe. And you're just not some guy that he don't know about. See, whether or not you want to have a personal relationship with him, he very much intently wants to have a personal relationship with you. He sent his own son to die for you. Oh, the big guy, the boss man, the big... You can't have a strong faith and a weak relationship with God. It won't ever produce. That's why you have to see that your faith is a mirror. Your faith is a mirror. Because it's a direct correlation with your relationship with God. And that's tough, but I want you, I want you, to, I want you to be consoled by some scripture here. Matthew 6, 24 says, No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to one 
and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. See, God is too big to not have your undivided devotion. God's too big to not have your undivided devotion. You, you, can't, you can't want what the world is trying to peddle you as freedom, as, as peace, as joy, oh my gosh, as something to be proud of, whew, and at the same time, in the same breath, go, oh, Lord, I want everything that you have for me. You can't do it. You can't do it. You'll have a weak faith. You'll have a very, very weak faith because you're divided. And like Abraham Lincoln said, who quoted Christ said, a house that's divided, you can't stand. You'll, you'll be living in the mountains. You'll be, you'll be living in the mountains. You'll be stopped. You'll be stopped by the problems. You'll be, your progress will be halted at every turn. Uh, you, you'll cave under pressure. All, all at the same time not understanding. God's saying, look in the mirror here. Look in the mirror here. When you focus on the Father, your faith in Him will grow. John 10 Verse 27 says, my sheep listen to my voice. Sheep don't just hear his voice. It says, my sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. And no one will snatch them out of my hand. See, when we come to a place where we see our faith as a mirror and we see how God intended it for us to live and how God laid out for our lives to be pleasing for God, what's really great is you just get to come to a place where I don't have to perform for anybody. I don't have to perform for God. I don't have to perform to get his love. I don't have to perform to get his grace or his mercy. Here's what I want to do. I want to grow my faith, God. And the way I'm going to grow my faith is I'm just going to apply what you tell me to do. I'm not thinking of myself higher than I ought. But instead, Lord, every day, God, what do you have for me today? What do I need to change? David prayed it how many times? Search me, O God. Reveal to me the things that I don't even... I, it's become just a fixture I've walked by this problem now for 13 years, God, and I don't even recognize it as a problem anymore. I've made peace with the monster that lives under my bed, God. I've allowed myself to live next door to sin for too long. God, reveal to me. Reveal to me. Reveal to me. Show me, God. Let me see, Lord, so I can have faith to... Y'all with me? Man. And, and see, we, we've just got to get out of this main character syndrome that some of us get. Where we think that the story is about, we think that God's plan and God's great love and mercy for us, that the story somehow, okay, I get it, it's, it's all about you, God, but somewhere in there, somewhere in there, the page is turned and it's now, it's about me. We've got, we've got to get out of that main character syndrome. It's not about us. We've not been given our faith so that I can look at me up here. Look how great. Look at how awesome. Because here's the deal. I, I fall very, very, very short of everything that God's called me to. I fall very, very short of what God's called me to. Praise God I have his grace. Praise God I have his mercy. Thank you, Lord, that through faith, I don't have to be the same person that I was. I can change and I can grow and I can continue in my relationship with God. That's where God wants us to do. That's how faith is a mirror and we can see God differently than we did. So as I close this, we have to see that the Faith 2 series is going to be a challenge for us. It's going to be a challenge for us. Because we're going to be overcoming the mountains that we've gotten used to. Now I just climb this thing every day. And I, get a good, I get a good spiritual workout because, man, I'm just, oh, that's just who I am. I just, oh, that's just what I'm dealing with. Oh, this is just, it's going to be a challenge for us. Okay, we're going to live different. 
we're going to start applying the word now. Things are going to change. The landscape around it. Oh, I didn't even know that was on the other side of that mountain. I've been used to looking at rock. I didn't even realize that beyond this huge problem, this thing that I thought I could never get around, this thing that I, I didn't have a solution for, just on the other side of it, wow, there's the promised land. That's where God wanted me. And then whenever we're stepping into it, God, wow, this is what you had for me. See, I, I couldn't see it from the other side of that mountain. That's why I needed to have faith so that I could say, hey, go to the sea. And not, will you please get out of the way? Will you, hey, if you're not doing anything today, mountain, will you please remove yourself? No, it's a command. We're commanding the mountain, be removed from me. And the, and the sea that we're sending it to isn't like the Bahamas. It's not going to a fun place. As I was studying that word, the sea that, that, that Jesus is referring to is the same place we're talking about the depths of hell. The same place where Jesus says it'd be better that you had a, a millstone tied around your neck and you'd be thrown into it. That's the same place we're sending this, this, these mountains to. You're going, you're going away for forever. It's not going to be good. They're going to enjoy the trip. Okay, that's what God's calling us to. And see, as we continue to walk in that, we're going to continue to produce a culture of having faith to do things, not beliefs to sit around. 